Hey everyone, I'm Jason O'Dell, and today I want to talk about focus stacking, which is something that's been around for quite a few years now, but it's made its way into Adobe Photoshop, and I want to talk about it in the context of using it for landscape photography. Now, most of the time when you think of focus stacking, we're talking about macro photography to get maximum depth of field. You know, when you use a macro lens, that depth of field is really, really thin. But we have a similar problem with landscapes when we're using even our super wide lenses. And that is if you're using a really wide angle lens and you're getting down low on the ground, a lot of times what will happen is uh, even if you set your camera to say f16, you're still going to have a slightly soft background. Now that's not the worst thing in the world, but there are ways to improve that. The classic way of getting ultimate depth of field was to use something like a tilt shift lens where you're able to move the focus plane so that it skims the entire scene. Well, most of us don't have a tilt shift lens. Um, they're quite expensive. So I want to show you this shot in Lightroom, uh, how we're going to use Lightroom to work on a landscape photograph that I captured in South Dakota with the Nikon 16 to 35 millimeter f4 lens. So let's let's take a look at this over here in Lightroom. So I've got these two images here. And what I did in the first image was I focused on this rock. Now I was probably only about a f two feet from this uh, rock formation. And you can see I'm d fairly low to the ground. So because I'm shooting at an angle here, the background, these hills in the distance are, are quite out of focus. So let's just zoom in here um, on this shot. Um, and you can see on the left here that the foreground's in focus. And as we move to the background, the background's quite soft. Now, on the other shot here on the right-hand side, what I did was, without changing my camera position, I moved the focus point more towards the middle of the scene, right about here. So in the first shot, I was focusing right here on this rock on the left. On the second shot, I was focusing more towards the middle of the scene. And in both shots, I was using f11 instead of f16. Now, quick side point, why would I use f11? The reason is you're going to get overall better sharpness with minimum diffraction artifacts if you use f11 or f8 than you would with f16. So f11 still got a lot of depth of field, um, but I'm not going to get the kind of diffraction softening that I might get if I was going to f16 or f22. And that's a particular uh, challenge when you're using high megapixel cameras like this one was from a Nikon D810. So I've got these two shots, and, and I work with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Lightroom. I'm going to do some quick adjustments to synchronize them, and then we're going to send them into Photoshop to do the image uh, stacking, the, the blending of the layers. So I'm going to go into the Develop module, and with both of my images selected, the first thing I want to make sure is that if I do any adjustments to one image, I want to have them perfectly synchronized with the second image. So I'm going to go down to the right hand side here on the bottom of the screen and I'm going to click the tab, this little light switch, by the sync option to enable auto sync. That's going to allow me to work on both images simultaneously. So any adjustments that I need to make to exposure or to contrast, I can do simultaneously. I'm going to leave those alone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the detail panel. I'm going to turn off sharpening. I don't want to have any sharpening artifacts getting in the way of my image. I can sharpen it later when I'm finished. I'm going to go into the lens corrections. I'm going to turn on chromatic aberration removal. And I'm going to enable the profile corrections to, to correct for the lenses. But in this particular case, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to leave the vignetting where it is, but I'm going to slide the distortion slider all the way to the left. So I'm turning off the distortion correction. And that's because when you focus at different points in your scene, the, the lens barrel distortion is going to be different for your focus point. So I don't want to have any distortion correction turned on uh, so that my shots are pretty similar when I merge them up. Okay, once I've done that, if I want to make any other adjustments, I can. But I, I like to keep my shots very low contrast, very plain uh, before sending them to Photoshop. I'm going to have the ability to work on the merged image as a composite later. So I'm going to turn off Auto Sync now, just so I remember to do it. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just launch Photoshop right now. 
make sure that it's running in the background so that that it's able to accept any images I send to it okay so I got Photoshop running let's go back to Lightroom I'm going to go down you can do this either from the library module down here in the in the grid in the the, the thumbnail grid in the film strip or you can do it from from the um, library module but what I want to do is I want to have both images selected so they're both highlighted and then I'm going to right click on them and I'm going to choose edit in now instead of going to Photoshop that would open them as separate images what I'm going to do is I'm going to take advantage of one of Photoshop's tools directly from Lightroom and that's the panorama merge so I'm going to go down here to the bottom where it says merge to panorama in Photoshop what that's going to do is it's going to open these two images and it's going to automatically get me into the panorama dialog in Photoshop where I can align the images so let's do that it's going to going to take a few seconds to load okay we get into Photoshop now and it's asking me what I want to do it's got the files already loaded in I'm going to choose auto layout and I'm going to uncheck everything here I don't want to do any blending here this is just aligning the two images as layers okay so turn off all these check boxes and then click OK and it's going to go through its its machinations here as it loads them all right it's getting these loaded in and now it's going to go through the alignment routine okay so what we've got now we have two images aligned and what I hope you can see is if we zoom in a little bit is that when the images are aligned this because the lens was different for both what you end up with is you lose some space okay there's a little bit of white transparent space here around this border now Photoshop will try to blend things together it can use content aware tools but I find for landscapes most likely what you're going to end up with is some artifacts so before I go anywhere further what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hide this topmost layer so I can see where the the transparent areas are I'm going to go into the crop tool to see and I'm going to just crop in this image to, to get rid of the transparent areas hit enter or return it's going to crop and now I'm good to go okay now you can see when I toggle this on there's a little bit of distortion happening that's okay we're gonna blend the layers together doing the focus stacking allowing Photoshop to mask automatically the areas for maximum sharpness so how do you do that here's the trick I'm gonna select both of my layers so I'm gonna come over to the layers panel I'm gonna shift click both of those layers so they're both highlighted here on the right hand side and then I'm gonna go up to edit and from the edit menu you're going to want to choose auto blend layers and from here the option that you want to choose is stack images and then you can choose to fill in seamlessly and use content aware fill now I've already cropped out most so this isn't going to be a problem for us but you can you can try to play with these different options try to blend them different ways to see which one works best for your particular image now I'm only using two images here but you can imagine for like macro shots or extreme depth of field where or, or even landscapes where you have three or more focus points for maximum depth of field this will work for all of those situations so just click OK after you've selected your stack and now it does its blending routine and what you can see is it's created a new composite layer over here which is a merge of these top two layers each layer if I just hide the composite for a minute you can see that each layer has got a mask so there's really no need for me to save these images let's just zoom in a little bit okay what you can see now is I got a sharp background and a sharp foreground so I'm just gonna go ahead go to my layers flatten the image and from here I can continue to work on this image now as the composite I can use my filters my effects and when I'm done saving it it's gonna go back into Lightroom so if I just go back into Lightroom now here we've got the 
full image after I've processed it. And when you zoom in on this, you can see after I've done a little sharpening, we have clean edge, you know, front foreground to background, deadly sharp. This is, you know, F64 kind of sharpness uh, without any weird artifacts or anything like that. So that's focus stacking for landscapes. I'm using Lightroom. I'm using the Photoshop Panorama Merge. And then I'm using the Auto Blend Layers from the Edit menu in Photoshop that allows you to focus stacking. I'm Jason O'Dell. You can check out my website at luminescentphoto.com, and I hope to see you soon. Thanks.